With 81 different costumes to pick from in Balan Wonderworld, but only three precious spots to hold on to them at a time, naturally, we'll all find our own favorites that we always want to make sure that Leo or Emma are bringing with them. The following are my top 10 costumes and why I used them as much as I could. Also, stick around at the end of the video to see some screenshots submitted from the community. After each Battle in Wonderworld video, I pick a few screenshots that I think look really cool and share them here. If you want to take part and submit some of your own, you can mention me in a tweet, at UnbrokenOdds, or use the hashtag UnbrokenWonderworld and I'll pick a few for each video. Alright, let's get into it. Number 10. Flame Blaster. Starting off our list of the best costumes in Balan Wonderworld, the Flame Blaster is useful in a fight with its bouncing fireballs that remind me a lot of the Fire Flower in Super Mario. Sadly, it's not able to jump, which makes platforming impossible with the costume, but the added ability that it doesn't take damage from flames makes traversing all of World 10 a breeze. Also, here's a hot tip for you: This works in the boss fight too, with both the lava and the spinning flame attack doing no damage to you. Number 9. Fixer Upper Another costume that serves a double function on this list, the Fixer Upper is used to help reach some of those out of reach balance statues in the different stages. The unique ability to put things back together really does come in handy. Plus, the Fixer Upper floats above the ground like the Merry Ghost, so it doesn't take damage from poison on the ground, making this one handy costume to bring with you. Number 8. Moonwalker the Moonwalker is a really interesting one on this list. The ability to freeze everything while moving and let it all resume again when standing still is really powerful and can help in battle as well as in platforming. In battle, your enemies will just sit and wait for you to jump on their head, making all minor battles a breeze. Sadly, the ability doesn't work on mini bosses or bosses. And this power will even freeze objects in the world around you, including moving platforms, Tims, and the dancing visions you see in each stage. A cool extra little detail that I noticed, the power actually doesn't affect the dancing chrono bunnies since they manipulate time as well. Number 7. Lethal Laser Launcher While you can unlock the launcher from playing the demo or entering the secret code on the home screen, I'll put the code to unlock it in the description down below and I'll make a video quickly to showing how to unlock it that you can click on at the top of the screen. The Lethal Laser Launcher can actually break iron blocks as well as shoot enemies, which makes this a great costume to bring when needing to break anything at long range. Still being able to jump and shoot when you stop takes a little getting used to, but it is great in combat and having the ability to open up new paths is awesome. Plus, it's just cool to be in a little mech. Number 6. Air Cat This adorable Air Cat costume you get early on in World 6 Act 2 and is a great one to bring with you. It allows you to run small distances in the air, letting you reach out of reach places really easily. This makes speedrunning and traversing the stages so much faster, as you can skip some platforms entirely. Plus, when in battle, you can continue the run after bouncing off of each Nagati's head, giving you more control of where you're gonna land and hopefully not get hit. Number five, Dusk and Dawn Butterfly. Now I know this is kind of cheating, I have two costumes in the number 5 spot, but they're basically identical except that one is awesome in the day and one is great at night. Both of these butterflies will let you easily reach places you normally wouldn't and make exploring the stages really easy. If you want to get to max height with them, prepare to tap the button like crazy, and if you want to get distance, doing longer, slower, more controlled flaps will get you more distance for your flaps. Just be careful with these costumes as they are a little slower, so combat can be a bit tricky with them. Number 4. Inky Blaster Now some people may question why I have this in the number 4 spot, and honestly, I think this costume is far too often overlooked, and it's easily one of the best offensive costumes in the game. The Ink Blast that this costume flings go so far and are so easy to aim, you can win any encounter with ease. I even tried running this costume through the boss fights, and you can easily take out most of the bosses with this costume. The only drawback is that it can't jump, so you do need to bring another costume with you, but that's what my top 3 costumes are all for. Number 3. Air Unicorn Sadly, you get this costume a lot later in the game. The Air Unicorn takes the Air Cat's costume to the extreme. Allowing you to run long distances in the air, this costume lets you skip whole sections of stages, which makes going back for any missing collectibles a breeze. 
Again, I find using costumes like this in battle super easy too, because you can keep running in the air after bouncing off of Nagati's head and make sure you know where you're going to land. Number 2. Double Jumper I'm pretty sure this costume has to rank high on absolutely everyone's list. A costume from early in the game that works as well as this is just amazing to have in your back pocket. The height you can get from these jumps lets you skip using probably close to a quarter, if not more, of the other costumes, especially since you can usually find some piece of scenery that you can manage to get a foot on and jump up even higher. I'm not sure why they made this costume look like a demon, because it's an angel in my books. Number 1 We finally come to number 1. How many of you think you can guess which one this is? Let's all say it together. One, two, three, Frost Fairy! I don't know if they planned for this costume to be this good, but however it came to be, this costume by far got the most playtime from me. While other costumes let you jump higher or run further in the air, combining both by gaining height while running in the air and extending how far you can jump make this costume easily the best in the game. You can use it to reach high places, you can reach far places, and you can use it to easily maneuver in battle. While sadly, you can't quite get every collectible with it, the amount of control this costume gives you, especially when moving between the platforming sections, is just astounding. There were so many times I was looking around for collectibles and would have fallen off the platform only for this costume to save my butt. I made sure to always have at least 5-10 to 10 copies stashed away of the Frost Fairy costume so I could bring it with me in all the stages and wouldn't have to worry about losing it. Bonus Alright. I've got one more bonus costume for this list. I struggled to put this final costume into the list because some people may never get this costume and, well, it basically breaks the game. So while it is awesome, I avoided using it through my first playthrough so I could actually experience the levels they were meant to be. If you don't know what costume I'm referring to, a quick spoiler warning as this is the hidden costume you can get from breeding the Ultima Tim. So if you don't want it spoiled, here's your warning now. Yes, of course, I'm talking about the Balan costume. This thing is so overpowered, I went back and tested it out and found that you can complete some of the stages using this costume in a matter of seconds. The way some levels are designed, you are essentially doing a big loop with the heart tree just behind the starting area, or higher up from it, and being able to jump and fly so high with this costume lets you skip basically everything. This costume is especially great for collectible cleanup, if you don't mind feeling like you're almost cheating the game, since you can fly to pretty much every area really fast. I will say this costume can be a little difficult to use in battle though, as it jumps really high and it's hard to be precise. Okay, that wraps up my top 10, well, 11 costumes from Balan Wonderworld. Do you agree with them? Are there any that you used more that you would make in your top 10? Let me know in the comments down below. Now for a quick look at some screenshots that you all sent in. First up, we have one from Pink and White Bat 12. This one is framed so well, standing on top of the broken pirate ship with the rainbow glowing overhead. Love that pose too. Really well done. Second one we have today is from Orbit Clovers. We see Leo looking on in horror as at least 11 Tims are being crammed into the elevator all at once in the Tim Tower. I love that one is wearing the Balan hat too. Up next, we have one from DP Tweet Stuff. There's just something that looks so cool about this screenshot. Balan almost looks like he's on fire, re-entering Earth's atmosphere, falling back to the ground. Great capture. Next up is Zavrik 2. With a horde of Nagati surrounding Emma, really nice atmosphere and a sense of dread as we all know a big battle is coming. Speaking of battle, Here's an awesome action shot of Lance getting ready to fling a powerful attack, flying through the sky. Donald's Tez Revs submitted this one that was captured at such a crucial moment. Way to go. Moving on to our last one for this video, RO Dubbing submitted this one of Balan standing on the edge of the crumbling ruins. I love the particle effects that look like something disintegrated right behind him and the contrast between the stone blocks and the metallic looking ones in the distance. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted screenshots. 
Remember, if you want one of yours featured at the end of a video, use the hashtag UnbrokenWonderWorld when you post them on Twitter. That's all for now. Thanks again for watching. And as always, happy gaming.